Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Effed Up Stories. I am your host, Will Pender. And I am your co-host, Ryan Sharp. And tonight, we will be jumping into another user-submitted story. Uh, This time, and get this, it's not the first story I've had like this, but anyway, a cursed iPod, right? Modern cursed objects. Cool, right? Um, So before we jump into that... um, couple little things Uh, we are ramping back up to be doing these shows regularly uh, as we were before our little um, I guess uh, silent time Um, the big thing that I wanted to tell you guys is very very close I'm thinking actually it's gonna be next weekend so next weekend we are planning to do a big episode I'm gonna have my big reveal and we got a lot of really cool stuff uh, headed your way. We're going to be doing the uh, Reptilian podcast that we've been talking about for so long. And some uh, sea creature, um, like underwater beasts, and a possible interview. Uh, so that that's some stuff we got coming your way soon. And of course, if you have an effed up story um, and you want to get it onto the website... You can send or into a podcast. You can send that to us by going to the official website, which is effedupstories.com. That's e f f e d u p s t o r i e s dot com. Go to the menu submissions and fill out the form. And hit submit. Um, one of the new things here that's happening is that um, I, you know, the effed up stories got way bigger than you know we ever anticipated, and it's still the same two two guys working on it and. Uh, the workload has just gotten crazy. So um, from here, moving forward, I have delegated the um, the editing, the submissions to Ryan um, so that I can focus back onto the podcast and the, the art and the website and all that jazz. So if, uh, you know, he's late getting back to you guys, you can yell at him instead of me. <laughs> So that that's one of the uh, one of the new things. And um, with that said, we're going to jump into the topic of tonight, which is on a cursed iPod. Now, this story was actually sent in to me a long time ago. Um, I've been wanting to cover it ever ever since. It's, it's been in the back of my head. I, I remember it from time to time. But every time I sit down in these chairs, uh, it escapes me. So th- this actually came to me. July 1st, 2015, from um, a man named Joey Snook. So, um, anyway, the year for him was 2008. He said, you know, this particular year was full of strange madness that got him into the occult, UFOs. Uh, He heard disembodied voices. He came into contact with cursed objects, dealt with magic spells and phantom phone calls. Um, So he's going to try and go through this chronologically. So in 2008, you know, this crazy roller coaster ride of paranormal events that happened to him had him question what reality as he knew it actually is. And the start of his story all started when his ex-girlfriend Christine went out to this party with her friend Kayla. And as far as Joey knew, you know, they were hanging out, drinking by the Sky Train with this uh, native girl. And Christine said that the native girl's name was Angeline. And she just happened to have one of those iPod Nanos. And Kayla had actually stole from her um, behind her back. And then she had given it to Christine. So, uh, you know, just to clarify that... uh, you know, Christine's there with her friend Kayla, and there was a, a native girl there named Angeline, and Kayla stole Angeline's iPod and had given it to um, Christine. So anyway, um, <clears throat> before they parted ways, Angeline couldn't find her iPod, and, you know, understandably was very upset. She began to cry because this object was really sentimental and important to her. And Christine, of course, did nothing. She just kept the stolen iPod. And the next day, Christine came over to Joey's house and, you know, told him what had happened. 
And she said that, you know, she felt really bad about it. But, you know, at the time, she was just really caught up in the moment. And so Joey asked her if he could use it while he went out um, to the store. He was going to go get, I guess, cold beer or whatever. And to his surprise, the iPod was actually full of music that he liked. Uh, you know, it had classic rock. It had metal. Um, so, it, you know, he, he dug what was on it. And about a week later, uh, Christine actually gave Joey the iPod because she felt guilty about it. And I guess, you know, she felt too embarrassed to return it to the rightful owner. And besides, uh, it just happened to be full of music that was suitable to Joey's taste. So, uh, apparently Christine had um, tried to put her music on it, but, you know, anybody who has an Apple device knows that it's secured in such a way that you really can't do that. Uh, you have to know, I think, I believe you have to have your Apple ID and, and password. Like, you can only have one um one user profile on a device like that, I think. Um, anyway, later that night, the events that is in the store began to unfold. So um, as Joey was about to fall asleep, he heard this voice whisper his name into his ear. And not only did he hear his name, but he also felt a cold breath on his ear and neck. And this just scared the shit out of him. And he got up immediately to see who it was, but of course, there was nobody there. Only Christine sleeping at the opposite side of the bed near the wall. So as Joey sat down, trying to figure out what had just happened, he glanced out of his window and noticed a UFO in the sky. And of course, he, uh, you know, holy shit, you know, I'm looking at a UFO. And, uh, you know, his, his name was whispered into his ear. Now there's this UFO. And he watched this light change colors while it moved about the sky. He said he noticed that it would teleport from time to time. Either that or it was going into another dimension and then back in two hours. So he woke his girlfriend Christine up. He wanted to show her what he was seeing. But she wasn't nearly as interested as he was. And, you know, she just turned around, went back to sleep. And I guess after watching it for a while, um, Joey eventually got tired and he fell asleep. And the next day when he woke up, he looked out his window to where he had saw the UFO the night before. And he began to question what he had actually experienced. And he thought, fuck it, it's beyond anything that I can rationalize. Things were going normally. He was just going to, you know, pass this off. But he couldn't help but notice the suppression or weight on his shoulders. People that were close to him started to give him the cold shoulder. Um, you know, later that evening, Christine came over to stay the night. They watched the movie Donnie Darko. And then they had some discussions that turned into arguments for no particular reason, and she broke up with him, and he began to wonder how things could, you know, end so abruptly. So, like, he, basically, he, <clears throat> the people in his life were, uh, it was like there, were, there was, like, a tension in the air that was causing issues that was abnormal. And after she left, he drank a beer... And, um, you know, in an attempt, I guess, to fall asleep. And he later woke up to his headphones blaring Fantasia for strings from the Exorcist film. And he said not only was it 3 a.m., but he knows for a fact that he had put the iPod on hold. And he said there was no way that it was possible that this thing could be playing unless somebody physically turned the hold button off, and then turned it back on. So why that particular song, he thought? He thought maybe the iPod had an alarm set for that time to play this particular song. And he checked only to find out that there was nothing of the sort. So he turned off the iPod, and he went to the kitchen for a glass of unfluoridated water while contemplating why all these strange occurrences were happening to him. And he looked out the window in the living room, and he saw this man 
pushing a stroller with a baby at three and I like this. He said three in the effing morning. <laughs> right. Um, so he noticed, you know, that this guy pushing the stroller noticed Joey observing him and looked directly into his eyes. And Joey said he got the sense that it was pure evil in the man's eyes. And he got the sense that he peered into his soul. And then the man began to speed walk away from his building. So Joey dashed to the door in an effort to pursue the man. But by then, you know, he was just nowhere to be found. And it seemed to Joey as if he had stole this baby. And he was off to do some kind of sinister deed with the poor little infant. And so Joey was becoming very drained from so many unexplained events. And he began also developing an obsession, almost a possession, with the iPod. And he didn't realize it at the time. He said Christine called him to get the iPod back, but he lied to her and said that he had dropped it in the sewer while running to catch a bus. And, of course, uh, something else that he noticed, he forgot to mention the images that were on this thing, which were legit pictures, as in not fake, real pictures of dead people. Decapitated heads, the before and after pics of, you know, this um, native girl decapitating a rat, and other pictures that he don't even want to mention. And then he began to hear disembodied voices saying that he had no soul and that it was too late for him to get it back. Joey was confused with where the energies were originating from. For whatever reason, he couldn't figure out the obvious answer, that the problem stemmed from the object right in his hands, the iPod. And he started collecting stones and crystals because of the metaphysical properties and noticed a difference almost immediately. But he wasn't getting to the root of the cause. He said the iPod was turning on every night at 3 a.m. And he was starting to realize that this was cursed. And he was becoming more and more withdrawn from his friends, from his family, Almost as if he were being possessed. And I mean, this is the stage that we often see with demonic oppression leading up to possession. But despite this, part of him wouldn't give in. He just, he went with it. He had this obsession. And later he found out from Christine that Angeline had died from a meth. Jeez, why can I not pronounce it? Methamphetamine. This methamphetamine overdose a week after Christine had gotten the iPod. That's peculiar, right? And Joey said it pissed him off because he wanted to give it back to her and he couldn't, he just couldn't get rid of it by simply throwing it out. So he had finally reached the point that he would hope that he could have given this back to her and now he can't because she's dead. And he said, uh, you know, he, he couldn't throw it away he said, believe him, he's tried. And he said, the voices won't stop. And it got to the point where he stole holy water from a church after getting some phantom phone calls. And he, you know, he, he tried all the stuff and it didn't work. So he destroyed that phone because he figured it was cursed as well. Now, this is the phone he got the phantom phone calls on, but it turned out to be only the iPod that was cursed. And on his way back from the church, he noticed an elderly native man walking down the alleyway in his direction. So Joey stopped him, and he asked him if he believed that an item could be cursed. And the native man said, yes, it is possible, and that his ancestors used to curse particular items that the white man had stolen from them. And he now knew that he wasn't losing his mind. So that night, Joey had a dream that Angeline came to him and he apol- and, and apologized about the iPod and she didn't mean for it to end up in his possession. 
She told him to bury it at a cemetery, and the next day, Joey went to the Mountain View Cemetery and did just that, keeping in mind that he felt like his life was being threatened this whole four months that this ordeal took place in. He said he buried it while he burned some candles and said a mantra before leaving it behind for good. And he said it felt very much like a funeral, to be honest. Later that night, he saw the same UFO as he had seen previously. And again, he watched it until he fell asleep. And the next day, he heard what sounded like a huge group of crows making a bunch of noise. And he looked out his window, and hundreds of crows were looking up at Joey while crowing furiously. And then they all flew away at the same time, creating this noise that sounded like a witch cackling. And Joey immediately got the sense of relief. The message was clear that he had broken the curse, that the cackling he heard while the crows flew away was the sign. And overall, he took this to be a lesson that he learned in the supernatural, that there are many other things that has occurred to him, but this is the main thing that has happened to him. And, you know, it, there's more to this thi- these things than meets the eye. So I guess the underlying elements of the story are that natives, um, I guess because they were being stolen from, are uh, have known at least in some pockets to curse items that they knew would be stolen and whoever stole those items would have the curse uh, fall upon them so uh, in joey's case uh, he didn't steal the phone but it ended up in his possession and uh, well he didn't return it either well he he did get to the point where um, he wanted to but yes i i agree like he he knew it was a stolen ipod right from the get-go and you know he he hung on to it. I, I I realized that I guess maybe he wouldn't feel like it's his place to you know he, he probably didn't even know the girl, but yeah. at, at the same time. Right? Now I mean when it comes to cursed objects, I don't think that there's anything that couldn't be cursed. I mean I'm sure if you if you tried hard enough you could curse a, a cross or a ro- you know rosary beads or, or or whatever you know i'm i'm sure there's there's all kinds of situations uh, so the the fact that you know this is a modern piece of technology at first you know you don't you don't think of curse, cursed objects like that you know it's always a you know a, a cursed gun or a hat now, the thing that really um, that really struck me with this is the presence of the UFO. That is an interesting, um, seemingly unrelated aspect to the story. It's one of those things. Um, over the years, how many stories have we heard and and read, and you know how many people have contacted us about, and and just you know random stories i've read um about ufos being present in supernatural seemingly supernatural uh events well not only that but in joey's case uh he's specifically relating this to possession and uh, demonic oppression and um, a lot of people make this connection between aliens and demons Yes, uh, claiming never, that a- aliens are the the new guys under which demonic entities operate. Right, and I mean, I've I've honestly, I'm not saying it's not, but I can never make that full connection. You know what I mean? But I mean, this is one of the more interesting stories where you know you have the a actual UFO show up, and then you have what sounds like it could be demonic oppression. Um, you know, it's particularly not not just because of what he felt, but uh, remember now, Angeline, the the native who owned this thing, um, for some reason, uh, and there were, were not only dead bodies pictures on there, which is more than a little disturbing. I know I don't have any on my phone, um, but apparently and allegedly a picture of her killing a rat, um, which 
you know, why would you take a picture of yourself killing a rat? Well, uh, especially decapitating it. It's one thing, you know. I mean, yeah. rats are a pest. Sure, kill a rat. That, that's fine. But to the, me, it falls in line with a sacrifice. I know it's a, it's just a rat, but a lot of times it's just the the significance of what something means. Um, you know what it symbolizes for for the uh, you know for the ritual to take effect, right? So it it almost seems like uh, maybe there had to be some kind of some kind of imprint left on the iPod for that to take effect. And in this case, it was a picture. Well, right? yeah, and if we 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 look at the the whole scenario, so. The phone or the phone, the iPod gets stolen, and you know whatever it was, weeks or months later, um, he actually looks at the pictures on it and realizes, you know, holy crap, this woman was into some weird stuff, and on top of that, starts having all these very negative, supernatural um, events happening in his life. <clears throat> um. It, it seems to me that Christine was probably involved in, in you know, some the dark arts, I guess you could call it, um, or, or at least involved in the supernatural in one way, shape, or form. Uh, in it, the, the, Do you mean mo- Angeline? Or an- uh, Angeline. Angeline's a native, Chris- right? Yeah, sorry. Um, that Angeline was obviously involved in, in, you know, some dark practices before the phone was ever stolen because why else would you have pictures of dead people and and apparently a picture of her killing a, an animal well it sounded to me like if what the native at the end of the story with what he was saying if it was correct that that was a practice that was their culture i guess that they knew certain people would steal certain objects and they would go ahead and curse them and then when they stole them you know it's, it's like it was befitting you know what i mean um so that that's what it sounded like happened but i, I gotta say what a coincidence that angeline would die you know like 10 days after her uh, you know i know people die all the time i know that but i just find the timing of uh you know this whole experience that joey has and and um the fact that she died and it's just weird right mm-hmm. well all together the whole sequence of events you know from the from when the phone was stolen so you have just this general sense of of oppression uh, you know the phone's coming on by itself you uh, um you know these phantom phone calls uh, and I believe that's a you know that the phantom phone calls were a story on to their own. Oh, they are, we we covered it calls from the dead, and we even did another one uh, where that was probably the more fucked up one, the Canada four one one. Yes, um, right. That that was some of my favorite collective stories on that. But yeah, I mean that that's a thing. Along with this strange character walking around outside three o'clock in the morning with a baby stroller. You yeah, know, that's that, that's a disturbing one. That is a disturbing one. You know, I th- I think uh, when you, whether knowingly or unknowingly, when you get into something dark, I mean, sometimes it's just somebody you know. It's not something that you do. You just, you know, we've all got uh, p- people in our lives that um, sometimes get into things a little deeper than than we would and actually just doing this show you and i doing the show have had some uh strange things befall us that we weren't you know we weren't really looking for it's just you know you put yourself out there and uh or, or just being in the vicinity of some of the stuff and you know and that's what happened to joey you know like uh joey didn't steal the ipod he didn't um you know, he wasn't the target for the curse. He just happened to be the recipient. Like, he, he got it, right? But then even his own character changed a little bit because, uh, you know, he was lying to Christine. Yeah, I, I dropped it in the sewer. Um, 
and all these different things. So, and that's lost something contact with his family. Yeah, like he he was having fights with with people that were you know it was just this tension and, and and stuff like that, and that happens with demonic uh, oppression. But I mean, truthfully, and this is just off the cuff now. I'm just thinking off the top of my head, but um, there's certain people, you know, just certain people when you're around them, um, they carry a. Uh, it's like this this heavy thing. It's it's really hard to articulate this, but um, what are, you, are you are you talking about like uh, what do people refer to it as? Um Psychic vampires. It, it could be. It could be. Um, there's a. I've met a couple people. Even uh, when I was in music school, I'm not going to say his name, but I, I told you who one of them was mm-hmm. uh, before. And man, I'm telling you, like, I'm not generally an unhappy person, right? Like, um, I wouldn't say I'm like g- g- giddy, fucking happy, go lucky either. But uh, I'm pretty in the middle a nice gray right and some of these people i mean i could be in a good mood it could be a day that um i'm gonna you know i got plans right I, i'm gonna oh yeah uh, uh tonight i'm gonna fucking go to dinner and then i'm gonna go in the hot tub and drink rum <laughs> right i mean that that could be my night but it might be what i really want to do and um i run into these uh one of these guys and it's like I'm irritable all of a sudden, and it's not because of anything they're doing. We could we could be you know, like having an on the outside everything is great. We could be having a good conversation. It's nothing that they said is nothing they did, um, but something about it is like I I feel this some something heavy or something. The negative energy that, that they're bringing the, is dragging just, you down. Just with being it. around them, just being around them, and, and it makes me irritable. It makes me kind of depressed. And um, and I don't understand it at the time why that is, and it, it's only been um, you know in, in the the later times that I start thinking about this stuff, uh, especially ever since like we had uh, a couple we've spoke to a couple different psychics, and they both said that I had this um, what do they call it when you can feel other people's emotions or something like that, uh, uh, empathic. Yeah, an, an empath or something like that. And, you know, truthfully, I don't really believe that I am, you know, but or I never did. I never thought of anything like that because really I feel like I'm a stone most of the time. But um, that is something that I've thought about more lately, especially um, after running into certain people that it does that to me. and uh, And I don't know why. But when they when they leave, it's uh, you know it's gone. And by the way, just in case you're thinking I'm not talking about you, but uh, after the podcast, I'll tell you <laughs> who it was. <laughs> um, but but for real, and and is is like an uh, an energy that emanates from them, and it just it sucks to fucking it sucks to the uh, the good energy or the good vibe out of the room, and it just. I don't know, like, and, and like the person I'm speaking of particularly, man, good mood, had plans, it was actually just this last weekend, uh, I don't know, I don't know, but uh, it's a real thing. Well, you know, I, I, I do very much believe that there, there, there are certain energy vibrational qualities to people, and we've called it different things over the years, over the centuries. Um, aura is one that that you know when when people are sensitive and can see those kinds of things. I think that's what they're talking about. You know, the aura is is your own personal energy fingerprint, and I think it's very possible that there are certain people, and in this case, objects that you know can either have a a lower uh, vibrational energy matrix about them or in the case of this iPod um, be imbued with with kind of a 
you know, maybe it's a it's like a it's like an artificial soul in a way, an artificial energy matrix that's just meant to be a black hole and draw people down and and suck all the 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 good out of your and I mean you, you look through the story and it all ever since he he got it it was just a constant downward spiral and it and, and not only just in in his own you know um with his his outlook and his interaction with people but it also seemed to draw things you know this creepy guy with the child the ufo that was observing him uh, the phantom phone calls i think that negative energy is contagious i i really do and i think like negative energy begets negative energy and maybe that's true for good energy too but uh it's not as common <laughs> right and i i feel like in some of these cases like uh the people i'm i'm thinking about i know they're depressed i know it it's uh you know, it's because of things that have happened to them in their life. And, you know, you carry it like baggage. It, it doesn't mean that they're, they're, I mean, it's hidden. It's not like it's out and you can see it, but you can feel it, right? Like you can feel it. Um, at least I, I can, and I guess some other people can feel it as well. And I think that um, what, ha like in the case of like the iPod and stuff like that, I guess there's cultures and, and groups of people that, know how to take that energy and wrap it around an object and have it stay there like a trap right and whoever like because i mean really i mean you could think of um you know an object just as a vessel right a vessel to hold something or to hold an energy to hold sure. a charge and that that's kind of what it sounds like happened there right and you know it maybe it doesn't have to be that powerful like you know you you get it started right you just pull that wire just a little bit and then it starts to unravel because like i said negativity begets negativity and it just snowballs right so uh, maybe it started with a, a small nudge so you think you that know? there's kind of a feedback loop happening. i do i i think i think that's the big thing, right? Is that at the end of the day, I mean, we do have, in general, the power to get out of addictions, to get out of negative uh, situations, whether it be relationships or, you know, your job or where you are. We have the power to do it, but it's so fucking hard to do it because it, it's, you know, it's one of those um, snowball effect kind of things like, if something makes you feel bad, then the way you feel makes you like you don't feel up to the task of tackling that. You don't feel up to the. It's easier to say fuck it and just go with the flow. It's hard, like, or if you're addicted to something, um, you know, it's very, very hard to break out of it because doing, you know, the the topic of your addiction feels so good. And not doing it feels so bad. While, while life in general normally sucks. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, so it, it's, you know, I know uh, personally, I have a really addictive personality. Um, so I have to be very careful um, with anything that, you know, I do that could be addictive. Right. Like, I haven't smoked for 12 years. But, you know, like when we first met first couple of years and I smoked I didn't smoke a pack I smoked two and three packs a day and some like if I was doing something like mixing or something like that it was it could have been more it could have been four or five pack I could sit up I, I could stand up and chain smoke um you know cigarettes are crazy right so then when I I quit which is really fucking hard to do I got a bag of Jolly Rancher candy and then I was hooked on them for fucking <laughs> Right. So like, um, you know, everything for me is like that. Um, so I have to be very careful. So like if when I drink, like when I find a drink I like or something like that, I have to be very careful 
to limit myself and like at first it's like okay well I'm only going to have like a couple drinks on the weekend and then it's like well you know one or two weekdays it's not so bad if I, if I limit myself but before you know it right you're you're a full-blown alcoholic you're a full-blown alcoholic so you know it's something that I got to be very careful for for myself um but I think you know, in, in terms of, of negativity, be, begetting negativity, uh, similar kind of thing. It's just it's easier to not deal with. It's easier to keep go. the status quo rather than try. It's easier to, make to a go with the flow. If yeah. the flow is going that way, it's easier to let it take you, just like a current, right? It's very hard to go against it, and uh, that that's what which, we see. Which is perhaps why um, he refused. You know, Joey refused to, to to acknowledge that the problem started and ended with his iPod. Yeah. So, um, I guess uh, the moral of the story being: um, don't steal shit. Don't steal shit, and especially if it comes from a native. <laughs> but, uh, um, well, really, I mean, truthfully, if you steal it, you probably deserve it. Um, Joey, Joey knew it was a stolen item and kept it. But really, is there? I can't, I can't sit here and tell people what to do. I'm not, I'm really not a good role model of what to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's bad stuff out there, and you put your, if you put yourself into it or you allow it to come into your life, um, you know, bad things can happen. To These you. things can snowball very quickly, as we've they, seen. As we've seen, and of course, if you have. Um, um, you know, I guess an ability to sense these, you know, things from people. If you have a, a sense of negativity or, or whatever, maybe it's a good idea to do something good for them. You know, that, that can be contagious too. I mean, if you do a, a, a good thing for someone someday, they might go and do something good for someone else. I mean, it, it sounds like a small thing, but these little things, like if you look at the internet, and you look at people in general. Every every not sh- not everybody, but a lot of people are so quick and to uh, insult you or shit on you or yell at you or you know. And and that's people. Um, you know th- that's people doing their best to deal with their life, and it comes out in different areas. It's, it's called lashing out at the wrong person, right? And that's because everybody is so stressed out these days. Everybody has so many issues. Um, but unfortunately, you know, that person that you scream at or you freak out at, then that makes them pissed off. And then they put it to somebody else and it just spreads, it spreads, it spreads. Um, if you do a good thing for somebody, it might make them do a good thing. I know if people have done good things for me and it's caused me to go out and do good things. Right. So maybe that that's what we should be doing. Right. Pay it forward. Pay it forward. And, um, yeah, so anyway, give us your thoughts on that in the, um, in the comments. And of course, uh, the other interesting element of the story being cursed objects that are modern, you know, we always expect it to be this, this ancient old thing left over in someone's home from like a hundred years ago or, you know, dug up from a grave, but I mean, it could be anything. So, uh, actually, you know what, there was a comment, uh, that I read earlier the week from somebody who had a great topic on, uh, he said we should do it on cursed musical instruments. And buddy, that is right up my alley. So if anybody has any great stories on something like that, like a cursed guitar or a harmonica or just something like that, I would love to hear it. And of course, if you have any other paranormal left up stories, I'd like to hear that too, and you can send that to us at fdupstories.com. That's e f f e d u p s t o r i e s dot com, and uh, yeah, we'll get it looked over and edited it and onto the website and into a podcast. And with that said, I hope you will tune in next week when hopefully we'll be doing the ever-awaited reptilian episode. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening.